Hey guys, welcome to Redneck Ways. How you all doing today? I hope everybody's said fine and dandy. I'm not doing too awful bad here in old Kentucky. Um, it's finally, well, it's Monday and I finally got my shift in down at the mill. So I thought we'd just sit around a little while and chit chat and I'll show you all um, a little bit of what I'm doing here in the old shack. Um, it's about, uh, I'll say 39 degrees right now here in Kentucky, pretty chilly, got the heat going, and uh, trying to stay warm, and I had to come in and turn the heater up on high, it was pretty cold in here about 10 minutes ago, so it's finally warming up, so hope everybody's doing well, hope everybody had a great weekend, and uh, back hard at it now again, Monday, but at least we got that in, and uh, before we know, well, it'll be Tuesday, and Tuesday be gone. So that's the way it is. Tonight, guys, <clears throat> I got uh, a little show and tell to show you guys. And um, I'm going to show you all that. And then after we look at that, um, we want to kind of tinker around with the old zenith. This is the old zenith that uh, was rat infested, that had the big rat nest in it that I've been tinkering on for months on months. And um, last night, um, I got to oscillate for the first time um, since I've been working on it a little bit, not a lot, but it was pulling signal through and trying to get it down to the speaker, which was barely there, but it was there. So and we, that's, that's a sign of hope. Um, I didn't think I was ever going to see any sign of hope out of the old girl, but there is. Now I took the tuning capacitor loose. I was going to try to take it completely off. But there's three big old ground wires attached to the frame, soldered to it. So I didn't really want to disturb that. So there's enough room for me to lift up and put some new bushings. The reason why I took the tuning capacitor apart um, was because last night I was, um, when I was messing with it and trying to get it in station, uh, tuned in to a station, it seemed like if I would kind of push up here on the um, dial cord knob, like pull push up and it would like lift the tuning capacitor a little bit itself and it seemed like I would get station in so it seemed like there was a little bit of short right in there I'm not really for sure exactly where it was because once I took it loose really didn't see anything touching or loose or what so I don't know really what the exact problem that was but it did have a it for some reason it would I would lift up on it and it would start oscillating and um, getting little birdies and whistling and stuff like that and of course always getting that daggone sports station and it seems like I can't never get away from it. but anyway that's what we're going to be doing tonight guys like I said I got a little show and tell and then we'll kind of tinker with this for a little while and have a little fun so grab you a drink and a snack and sit back in your recliner and just watch me goof off so uh, no, I forgot, I, well, I didn't forget, I lost my little clicky-click thing that turns the phone off, so I've got to do it like this, so it's unprofessional, I know, but I never claim to be professional at this stuff. Alrighty, guys, I'm back, and today, guys, like I said, I got a little show and tell I want to show you all. Um, I've been looking for them on these little radios to add to my collection for a while, and I finally found it, and... I want to share it with you guys. <clears throat> it is a old 1924 Radiola 3. Um, back in 1924, this radio went for $24.50. And it sold in the thousands. People absolutely just love this little radio. Um, it just... I love it. It just... Everything about it, even right down to the smell inside the cabinet, I absolutely love about it. Um, on the receiver part, um, it uh, receives up to 470 to 1540 kilohertz, um, pretty much same as today's radio. Um, the cabinet is made of mahogany. And the top of it and the knobs are black bakelite. And all the little switches and, 
the little screws there you see and everything those are nickel plated um rca made a um, another radio sim similar to this one and it was the rca uh radiola um uh what was it uh, one 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 dash four or dash a and it used four tubes and where this one only used two tubes and the difference was pretty much on the four tube radio you could use a loudspeaker and this one was earphone only which is those little holes there so this one is a um regenerative radio which means that um the tube that acts for the amp it um it also uh, controls the feedback and everything in in the receiving part so not only is it used for a, like a volume it also um, works into the receiving part also um this uh, little radio takes um two wd11 tubes which fit in there they're uh four uh pronged tubes which we do not have tonight um that they did not come with the radio and i really wish it did because they're very pricey um i looked at them on ebay and there was a set for 120 dollars so it's gonna take me a little while to save my my change up to get them but uh definitely going to get those in the future and um when i do We'll make a video on that and see how well it works. So let me get you guys set up up here. And um, we'll take it apart. Take it. Uh, come on, Roger. Talk right. We'll, we will take it apart and look at the insides. So just give me a second. Alrighty, guys. I'm back. Um, there was something, I, a couple things I forgot to mention when I was going through and talking about the radio. Um, on the tubes, um, one of them acts like a detector. Scanners on. Okay. Um, one of the tubes acts as, as a detector. And the other one is the amplifier. So that's the two tubes. And then on the um, on the wires here we got on the side. That's our battery wires. And uh, here they are, guys. And they are still nicely labeled with this little these little metal tags. Glasses. This one here is the C plus, I think. It's either C plus or G plus. I say it's C. Yeah, C. It may be ground. No, I'm wrong all the way. It's got a little rust on it. It's A minus. That's the A minus. They need cleaned a little bit here. I believe that's the A positive, but you get what I'm talking about. And um, on the batteries, um, the A battery is 1.5 volts used to heat the filaments. <clears throat> and um, the B battery um, wires um, are 90 volts to supply the high voltage on the two plates. So it's pretty much straightforward on that. So it won't be, once we get some tubes, it won't be very hard to fire up. So it has two screws here on top to take off. I mean, this case, you couldn't ask for a better case. There's no cracks. There's no flaws. Just in beautiful shape. Take 
take these two screws out. There's that. And it's a little tricky to get this out because you got to kind of feed this wire up through her when you pull it out. Go ahead and take the wire completely out so we can set the box aside. Maybe. Might not be able to. That's about as far as I can take it because of those little metal things. But I just want to show you guys, look how good condition that wrap is. I mean, it looks like it just came off the store shelf. Let's see if we can set this over here so we can look at the radio. Let's flip her over. And there she is, guys. Here's where the uh, the two tubes hook up. Is that light on? Let me see. Let me turn this light on, guys. Yeah, that's better, ain't it? Here's the little tiny transformer right here, which I haven't checked yet. I haven't ohmed it out. I hope it's still good. Because that's the scary thing about these ra these battery operated radios. You don't know, um, you know, who the person could have been that didn't know how, maybe didn't know how to power this up and, uh, you know, stuck a high voltage on the filament wire and burnt the coil up. Let's hope that didn't happen. But here's the, some of the um, connections here. Looks like, looks like an um, old, um, Oh, um, fuses, house fuses for breaker boxes, what it looks like to me. Like I said, there's where the tubes go down in. All that looks good. Here's the, um, the battery setting. So when your battery runs low, you can just adjust it as the battery drains. I guess it kind of works like a variac. And here's uh, this. This is the station selector here. And when you turn this, what happens is inside this coil, that it moves around. I tried to make one of these myself one time. Well, actually, I can show you. And I didn't. And it's harder to do. And then what do you think? Let me see if I can get that real quick. I forgot I took some of the wire off. But I mean, I had, I tried, that's all I can say. It worked a little bit for a crystal set, but not very well. Um, it was my connection coming through this screw. Because it's got to turn, you got to fix it where that wire will go, you know, it'll continu continuously turn. So I think that was giving me problems. But anyway. And on this side, this is the amplification, and it also turns. And it's just a little dusty inside, not bad. Here's the earphone jack. And that's all there is to it. 1924 RCA radio. I've got the cord all wrapped here. I didn't mean to do that. Let's see if we can get that unwound without breaking it. I don't know how it got in that situation. So, I'm going to put it all back together, guys. And uh, here's the inside the box, the mahogany box. Nice clean box and 
Boy, does it smell good in there. Here's the um, badge. So, really neat little radio. Let me get it all back together. Get the wire pulled back through. Yeah, I'm glad I didn't pull that all the way out. This is going to be a pain to get it back in like this. It's very stiff. And it ain't easy to work with here. And the way it goes through the side. together let's get our screws back in very neat I should have owned that out well, I had that open, but I'll do it later. Because uh, in case it it's bad, I don't want to know right now. <laughs> tell you the truth. But I will I will check it before I order tubes for sure. This one tighten back down. And there we go, guys. I hope you all enjoy looking at my radio on this show and tell. So, now, guys, we'll get ready to, um, we'll get ready to put them bushings in this, uh, tuning capacitor over here on this old zenith. We'll try to find a couple bushings put in there. And we'll get this button back up. Um, I don't think I'm gonna power it up tonight, but. You guys can hang around with me, and we can go ahead and get the bushings put in, get the screws back in. And we may change out that wire on that magic eye. Because it's got a wire here that's completely the... All of them need replaced, tell you the truth. They're just brittle and falling apart. And we'll have to end up rewiring the whole radio before I put it back into its case. All right, guys, I want to put y'all up on Skyview, and uh, we'll get the bushings put in this old girl. All right, guys, let's see if we can get, let's see if we can try to get that old, let's find us some bushings here. <sighs> Four, three of them. I could use those if I had three of those. They're all different. Huh. I don't think that one's different. Does that one match any of them? That one matches that one. So if I can find one more of those. Come on, just 
just need one more. one no it's like that one Another flat one matches those. All right, we're going to have to try to mix mismatch, I guess. Let's see. That one won't work. That one won't work. That one won't work. What's that other back there? That one's too thin. I guess we'll use these. They, they match pretty well. That. I'm going to have one oddball, but it's the same height, I think. Yeah. So we'll just use him. So let's get these installed. Use that one. Let's see if I... Get the screw, if I can get it screwed in, that's going to be the next thing. If it ain't too tall. No, that's going to be perfect. Get this one put in. I'm thinking where these bushings were bad, that maybe they had, uh, they was grounding out to the chassis. That, I know there was something definitely going on. We got one more back here. We can get it on. Oh, I had to probably take one of these off up front. Them, them, uh, it's got three ground wires soldered to the bottom. So it makes it very difficult. You can't get the, the tuning capacitor off unless you take those three grounds off. Let's see if that can give me some room back here. Not really. I just need a half a centimeter. Man. How did they plan for you to uh, re put new bushings on, I wonder? Alright guys, I'm going to pause this because I'm going to be fighting it. Give me a second. Alright guys, I got him in. I had to fight that thing. That backer, the one back on the very back, down there. I couldn't get the 
the tuning capacitor to pull up far enough so I had to use a thinner one but it's not touching metal and that's what I wanted so she's got some new new pads on her so let's get those bolted back down all right Let's see here. And I gotta watch that magic eye. Afraid I'm gonna break it. Now, this ought to be fun. where the screws are let me get you guys down here because y'all can't see up there all right y'all can see now i've got to put uh, the nuts back on here right here and here because magic uh, i wish i could just unpulled it out of there like I said, I'm trying to break it. And I got to put the nuts back on here. Got to get them on. This got to go back up there. Just like that. And because it grounds. There's a few things here that has to go back on because it grounds to it. <coughs> Can't get a lot where I want it. to go back on there. And it ain't wanting to go back. I knew this be aggravating. Go up on there like it's supposed to. There we go. Now it's gonna get the nut back on it. That's gonna be fun. to put them on with the hemostats first. This is one of them radios just, you know, you just pull it out on rainy days and work on a little bit here and there. That's what I've been doing. And it's starting to come along, I'm thinking, because I wasn't getting anything out of it at all. And like I said, it started um, oscillating for me last night. It was just the tuning capacitor was giving me problems. It Like I, well, I explained it in the beginning of the video, it was just acting funny. So that's why I'm going through all this. Plus it needed this anyway. Now that don't want to go on. All you gotta do is pop on there. Huh. 
There we go. There we go. As long as it's, it stays right there, we're well, good. And somehow the top nut popped back off. Which I think it's supposed to have these little um, crush um, washers on it too. Forgot about those. Like that. that back on hopefully I don't know how it came off again it did go there's a big pile of solder came somewhere Came from somewhere. Put some back on. started and we have one more guys and I don't remember where it is it's right there and that one had a big washer had this one right here on it to be stubborn. Snug. This one up. That's good and snug. Now the last one. All right, she's all snug back up. Check our work, make sure we got everything in. I took, I accidentally took the IF can off yesterday too. I hope I didn't mess anything up. I didn't take it all the way out. I just accidentally um, took the boats out. All right, guys, I think we got it all back on there. I just noticed that resistor. I don't know if it's supposed to have a black tip or not. It may be alright. 
But yeah, um, I've recapped almost this whole entire thing. There's a, a few levers. One, two, three, four, five. There's five or six um, old Zenith capacitors still in. But uh, I have, I pretty much did every, all the other ones. Now, I haven't touched any of the dog bone resistors in the, uh, the old radio. Um, the Ultralytics, I did, I got them switched out. They are switched out. 600 boaters. 600 volts. All of these have been 600 volts. Um, I do have a problem as far as this little coil here. Um, I'm not for sure exactly where that connects. I believe it connects right here. I've got to look at my um, schematic and figure that one out. I think I looked before and I couldn't really even tell on it. But that definitely needs to be put back in place. I do remember it being up in here somewhere, but there's two different connecting places and you can see where one's broke and it kind of looks like it fitted there. But as far as the second one, I don't have no idea yet. We'll come to that bridge when we We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. So let's flip this back over, guys. Let me put you guys... Well, hold on. Let me get this flip back over. Watch this magic. Ah. Oh. Alrighty. She's back together. The new bushings look good. It feels a lot better. It's not wig one. So, that's good. So, guys, I was going to change this wire on this magic eye on this video, but we'll just wait and we'll do that on another video because it's, it's getting long, this video is. But you see that bare wire? See this bare wire here? That's the one I'm going to change for now. They all need changed. So, and I'm going to probably end up painting this chassis um i was hoping to be able to take his tuning capacitor completely off and then take the tubes out and paint it but i did paint the transformer i got that painted but i think i'm just going to paint this because it's just so bad where the mice were in it running rapid so then uh I'm on the search for a new uh, faceplate. This one's in pretty bad shape. Pretty bad. And um, also the um, the pointer. It broke on me here a while back. I'm going to have to find another one then. Look how hot that thing had got before. It just warped that thing. But she's old and rough and all that. And it just makes me love it that much more. So. Alright guys. That's enough of me rambling on. Thank you all for watching. Um, thank you guys for all my subscribers. Thank you all so much. I appreciate you guys. I appreciate everybody that watches. And I hope everybody enjoys watching and gets something out of these videos. And um. You guys stay well and healthy and safe. And until next time, I'll see you right here at Redneck Ways. Bye, guys.